gang. Good morning, gang. It's Sunday, the 25th of June 2017. Welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk, the start of another week. Depending, of course, if you decide to start your day, your weeks on it. What 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 do you call the start of the week? Sunday or Monday? I call it Sunday. Start of the week is a Sunday. First day of the week is a Sunday. And of course, the 25th of June. We're halfway through the year. January, February, March, April, May, June. 25th of June. You know what it is in six months' time, didn't you? Ding dong merrily on high. In heaven the bells are ringing. Yes. Christmas in only six months' time, boys and girls. Just enough time for you to save up for a little gift for old me. Poor old soul, dear. Now, don't, as always, gang, don't be embarrassed by feeling you need to spend more than £200. Anything up to £200, I won't be disappointed. OK? Anything up to £200, I will not be disappointed. I promise you that. OK? Uh, feeling very tired today. I felt tired yesterday as well. As soon as I finished the show, I went downstairs. And, um... Uh, I think I, I, I started doing my lunch and then uh, Ronnie came round and I was just in, I was on the settee so tired and I feel a bit like that again today. You know, I'm probably not showing that to you, but um, I do feel quite tired today. So perhaps a smaller show, then I'll finish the show today, go down and do my lunch. It'll be lunchtime by then. Um, and then uh, watch Doctor Who from last night. I've seen a bit of it. It's looking excellent. This last series of Doctor Who so far has been the best since they rebooted it with David Tennant. And that's a few years ago now, isn't it? How many was David Tennant? Was it three? Te so we've got Tennant, one, two, three. The bloke after him. Oh, Christopher Eggleston, that's one. Um, David Tennant, that young one. One, two, three. And now him. So it's eight years Doctor Who's been back on the screens. Hasn't that gone quickly? Can't believe where the time goes. And here we are six months into the year as well. Gosh. Anyway, so um, Ronnie came around yesterday and he starts fussing around you because I owed him 50 quid. I, I Now, I never see him on a Saturday. Very rarely I see him on a Saturday. Like yesterday, he's knocking at the door. As I finish the show, my doorbell went. And there he is. Where's my 50 quid? Honestly, when money is owed, don't they knock at your door fast enough? I'm going to have to owe him more money in future. Then I might get a bit of a, 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 a more of a visit. Anyway, the Lord got him back from above. Oh, yes. Because I said, I'll go and make a little fuss of Katie outside while you're here. Katie the cat was in the garden, you know, doing her circles. Round and round and round she goes. And then she just sits there and stares into space for like four hours. Incontinent, demented cat I've got, bless her heart. But we still love her. And so I said to her, go and make a fuss of the cat. Be very careful where you tread. You know where this is going already, don't you? He's gone outstairs. And uh, as it was a hot day, I think he took his trainers off as well. I came back it, up here, done a few little bits and pieces, went back downstairs. And I stopped. What's that smell? And there it was all on my kitchen floor. He'd stepped in the cat poo that I had said, watch out for the cat poo over there. Well, I didn't point exact. I didn't know where it was, actually. You can see if you look. You can see. It's not like covered. It might be a little bit there, maybe a two bits before I spot it and clear it up. And I hadn't been out there. So he's trod in the pack. It's gone in between his toes. Oh. Cat poo in between his toes. Can you think of anything worse than that? No, the answer. So I think, fortunately, I've got a hose out. So I made him stand outside and wash it down. Can I have a shower? No, you're not getting in my shower with, with cat poo on your foot. And it's all your own fault. If only you, no one listens to me. You just go about your own business. Don't bother anything I've got to say. No, if only you'd listened and looked, you wouldn't have cat poo on your foot. Have you ever got it on your hands or anywhere? Oh, only a devil to get off. Oh, the stench is the worst. It's worse than dogs, isn't it? Cat poo. Anyway, she's just sitting there, staring into space as usual, completely oblivious to the, to the, thing, the, the things going on around her. <laughs> oh, so that was yesterday. Funnily enough, just before I um, uh, went to work last night, I went outside and I'd done exactly the same thing. <laughs> Fortunately, with my shoes on. So not to worry about that. I had my shoes on. Didn't go in between my um, uh, my feet at all. Let's say hello to some people who are with us nice and early this morning. 
Shania says, I love the opening music. Good, Shania. It's not going to change. The opening music is not going to change. People don't like the music right at the beginning because before the show starts, you may have noticed, there is a five-minute countdown, and I keep telling people why this is. The five-minute countdown is because if I just switched on the thing and started, I could be talking for five minutes before you realised anything was happening, and then you've missed five minutes. I'm thinking of you all the time, you know. Not me. You, you, you. And that's why there is that there. Now, Shania... There is a brand new five minute countdown coming soon. With lots of pictures and videos on it. I tell you not, I lie not here. I spent three hours yesterday afternoon and I was late going to bed for my afternoon nap. I spent three hours on this yesterday afternoon and it's not quite finished. I reckon another hour and it, that's how long it takes to do a, a, the five minute video that you will see possibly from tomorrow, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, depending if I if I'm able to finish it by tomorrow. I think probably more likely Tuesday or Wednesday. There is a brand new five minute opening video, which is nearly done. But I might have to change some things on it. So I'm very excited by that. It, honestly, as three hours yesterday I spent and I reckon I've got another hour to go on that. I hope you like it. The good news, Shania, the music remains the same. Boo -doo 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 -doo, which will really upset my sister, who hates the music. I don't know what her problem is, dear. She just has ABBA on all that. Nothing wrong with ABBA, but you've got to open yourself. My ex-wife used to like Elvis Presley a lot. Oh, I couldn't stand Elvis. Oh, all the time it was Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Actually, now I've got a bit older. I don't mind uh, Elvis Presley at all. My sister, ABBA. My best mate's boyfriend, bang, 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 R&B crap. Oh, dear. Beyonce, who's that other one? Starships, da, 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 da. You know, short skirts and knickers all over the place. <laughs> Vera Lynn never used to dress like that, did she? Like Rihanna coming on in practically a piece of string. That's what, have you seen these female R&B artists? They walk on the stage, all they've got on is a small piece of string. That's it. Ghastly, dear. There are ways to dress. Good morning to Mr. Sean Michael Crabtree. Good morning to you, sir. Peter Hyde says, morning, Chris. Hope you're well. Could you say hello to Jade and Cow? Hello to Jade and Cow. Jade and Cow. Watching with me today. Good morning to you two. Hope you're having a nice day there. Mark. Good morning, Mark Cording. Is off to West End Theatre Showcase in Trafalgar Square. I went to that one. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. You all enjoy that. Uh, see you later at the Cams and I. Oh, good. Yes. Cams and I karaoke tonight, boys and girls. If you're in North London, do join me and the wonderful staff at the Cams and I in Camden. Strangely enough, literally opposite the road from the tube station. You come out the tube station, you cross the road, you're there. No going up, no going down. You're there. Five seconds from the tube station. OK, Cams and I karaoke tonight and every Sunday between 8 p.m. And 11 p.m. Mark's going to be there tonight. He's got a really good voice, Mark. Wait till you hear him. Good morning, Diane Jeb. Morning, Diane. Hope you're well this morning. Um, Duke's there. Chris, bring me a cuppa upstairs, please. Oh, sadly, you're not here, Duke. You could have been. You could have been. But once again, you decided not to be here. Otherwise, you would have had tea in bed, breakfast in bed. I would have brought the cat up to you. I might even have given you my own pillow. How is How kind is that? I'm such a kind, loving person. I really am. I might even bring in one of my spider plants to put next to the bed, to put next to your pillow, so you can look at that all night long as well. Yes. Morning, Callum. Who says I got locked in the pub toilet last night? Couldn't get out of the cubicle. <laughs> oh, that happened to me when I was a little boy, Callum. Honestly. I locked myself in the downstairs toilet when we were in Roehampton. I think my dad had to break the door down in the end. And other, other locked in cubicles scenarios. I once locked a, a teacher in her, in, her, in her office, the headmistress, when I went to primary school in Peckham. That's going back some 1968, possibly, something like that. <laughs> Mark says, I haven't seen Doctor Who yet. I heard it was a banger. Very, very good what I've seen so far. This series really has been excellent. I'm telling you, excellent. And Sean, 
also says, I agree Doctor Who has been the best so far, other than David Tennant was my best Doctor. Uh, this one that's on now is my best, Peter Capaldi. I just wish he was staying longer. Um, very, very disappointing that he's going so soon. They don't stay very long, do they now? Like a couple of years and they're gone again. But it, it, this series, it, I think it's happened three times now where he started to regenerate. It happened again yesterday, didn't it? That's as far as I've got. Well, I've got a bit further than that. But he's, he keeps starting to regenerate. I noticed that. And then he snaps out of it again. So it's, it's obviously on the cards. I'm wondering, isn't tomorrow the last one? I'm wondering if he's going to go early or whether he'll be here for the Christmas one. Interesting. We'll see what happens there. Uh, morning, Alan Russell. Good morning, sir. Uh, Shania is very pleased that the music is staying. Me too. Oh, thank you, Mark. Nicki Minaj. That's it. Nicki Minaj. There's another one. Comes on. R&B pop singer comes on stage in a string. Knickers right up herself. Terrible, dear way to dress. Terrible. Um, can't wait to see Justin Bieber in Cardiff. Oh, are you really? Are you going to try and touch him? Are you going to try and touch him? Oh, you are. Oh, you push your way forward from those nasty screaming teenage girls, dear. Justin! Justin! Ah! <laughs> I wonder if I sent him a tweet or something. Would he be interested in doing my kingdom karaoke from the car? <laughs> something like that, maybe. Oh, dear. Alan also hates R&B music and Garage. Doesn't do anything for me. No, Garage. I didn't like Garage either. Or uh, Drum and Bass. Not me at all. Good morning to Lou. Morning, Lou. Who says, it's a small world, Mark. My daughter sang there yesterday. She is singing and dancing there today. Have fun. Is that right? What, at the Camden Eye? Oh, in Trafalgar Square. Oh, is she in a... What, what show is she in, Lou? How excellent. Just look at the talent we've got here today. People that are talented. Good morning to Wayne, who says, Chris, you're in bed with me. I don't think so, mate. I don't think so. Come off it, you're nearly my age. Who wants <laughs> who wants to be with someone their own age? Do me a favour, Wayne. God's sake, man. Dear, dear me. Um, good. Mark says, rumour has it, if Peter Capaldi is regenerating next Saturday, could be the final one. I have got a feeling he's going to go early. I think next week... We're going to find the new Doctor. Nothing's been said. They've done a damn good job this time, the BBC, of being secretive about it. Because I don't know about you, when the newspapers, usually the Sun or the Star, when they come out and they tell you, oh, top secret, here is the next Doctor, a leak from the BBC, tell us it's going to be so and so. I think that's a great shame. I really do. It spoils the fun. Whenever I see, you know, when a program's finished and it says next week, I don't, I never watch that bit. Never, ever watch it. I think it just spoils the fun of the whole thing, don't you? Yes, keep it quiet there. And good morning to uh, Dennis Granger, who's also with us this morning. Morning, Dennis. Hope you're enjoying living back in London. He moved down to Cornwall. And I gather he's not the, this, the first person to do this. He moved down to Cornwall, was there some time. And they had to come back to London in the end because it was so quiet and boring. <laughs> I mean, you would think, you see, I, I and probably you thought this as well, Dennis, when you went. But I, I felt for a long time I'd be happy, happier in a little bungalow, two bedrooms, out in the country in the middle of nowhere. No neighbours. I, I like that idea. But you're saying, but you've got another half, so that's different, slightly different. But you wanted that, and you had that, and you had to come back, didn't you? Because you were so bored. So it does worry me that if I was to try and do that, what would happen, dear? I'd have to just buy another house and keep this one just in case I want to come back again. I suppose you could do it as a holiday home, couldn't you? But then how much driving do you want to do? I mean, it appeals to me to buy a caravan near my sister. There's a place called Willow Holt where I'm uh, I'm actually going up there in the autumn to spend a week up there. And um, uh, excuse me. And uh, uh, they you, you can have a caravan on the site for X pounds, you know, and I think the site rates were about two thousand pound a year on that one, which actually as caravan site fees go isn't bad at all. And it's a quiet place. It's fairly quiet there. And that does appeal to me. And sort of three days a week, I could go up there and then come back again. But, I mean, the, it's like a three-hour drive, you know. 
So if I went up sort of on the Monday night, that's three hours, then I won't drive Tuesday, Wednesday, and another three hours back on Thursday. Mind you, it's probably the same as I do coming to work. It's instead of going to work every day, I'd be doing a one three hour up there instead of a two hour to work, and one three hour back, which replaces two, four. Well, I suppose that's actually so. It's about the same, isn't it? Three hours there, three hours back would be the same as working every night anyway. So, yeah, I suppose so. Dennis says, it felt like we moved there to retire and die. It was too quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry it didn't work out for you. But presumably it works for other people. I don't know. Oh, good morning to young Reese. Good morning, Reese, today. Morning, Reese. Have you got married yet? You're getting married soon, aren't you? Yes, Reese is with us this morning. Good morning, Reese. Is the other one there as well, his lordship? I do hope so. so tell him I said hello. I'm here as well, OK? Mark Spark, North Cording. Um, I look for her. Oh, she's at the Sylvia Young School. Is that the girl who's on the stage? That's good, isn't it? Lovely. All right. Um, I was going to tell you, Ronnie has also gone to Malaga. For, I mean, what a ghastly place that is to go. Malaga, dear. Malaga, apparently... Uh, it's him and um, uh, a few friends that have gone there. And Ronnie, my best mate, always liked to try and make it so that he's better than everyone else. And then he announces he's going to Malaga. And then as quick as a flash, he said, oh, but it's the better part. I said, are you serious? Is there a better part of Malaga? That's worse than Benidorm, dear. Where are you going on holiday? Oh, we're going to Benidorm. Oh, how ghastly and awful is that? Malaga? <laughs> there is no nice part of Malaga. I'm sure there isn't, unless someone wants to correct me there. Oh, my God. Reese is watching me in the bath. Well, put something on, dear. I'm not watching. I'm not watching your bod. And what are you writhing around in the bath while you're watching me on there? That's very wrong. Are you on your own in there or is he in there as well? That's quite nice having a bath with someone, isn't it? Have you ever, have you ever done that? I mean, if you haven't got anyone to go to the bath with, a dog will be just as good. If you've got a dog, get them in the bath with you. Not cats. They don't like it. Cats do not like baths. Although, I've got a lady coming round Tuesday to give my cat a little bit of a groom. Because she is very elderly and it's difficult to keep her clean, to be honest. So she's going to have a bit of a groom with a cat lady. 45 quid, dear, for about half an hour. Jesus Christ. I mean, the money's pouring out of this window. Pouring out, love. 45 quid for a cat groom. Blimey. And apparently she gets a dry shampoo. Now, I've no idea what that is. I don't know how that works. I mean, if you were, you know, is it the same? Is it like a powder? So if I had dirt on my hands and put powder on and rubbed them together, they wouldn't be clean, would they? Do you see what I mean? You need water. So I don't know how a dry shampoo quite works. Anyway, that's what she's having Tuesday before I go to Slimming World. Oh, yes. So far, I've lost... Nine pounds, thank you, in Slimming World. My next weigh-in is on Tuesday. And it's time for this morning sneeze. <laughs> oh, God. Always like to have a tissue. Have you seen disgusting people when they sneeze like... And you see it pour out of their mouths. Disgusting, filthy, dirty people. We're surrounded by them all over the place. Most of them vote for Labour. You've seen... <laughs> You've seen them. Labour supporters sneezing in the street and in clubs. <laughs> I see they're all at Glastonbury, aren't they? Oh, my God. What a place that is. Have you ever been to one of those places? A music festival? I can't think of anything worse. So who did we have there? I saw them on the telly yesterday. Um, they had uh, uh, Johnny um, Johnny Depp, wasn't it? Johnny Depp was playing the guitar. You know, Edward Scissor Scissor Cut Cut Hands. Him. And he, he was also... Was he Charlotte in the Chocolate Factory? Was he in that? Or the Mad Hatter's Tea Party? Or was that the same thing? Can't remember. No, he was. He was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Excellent programme. Excellent film. I think I prefer the original, but it doesn't matter, you know. And the Mad Hatter's Tea Party thing, he was in that. Is it Blair, Blair, Blair Rabbit? Blair is, he is like, Tony Blair is like a rabbit and he keeps jumping back in. I wish he'd jump off somewhere else. So they add him. Now, where's we have a bit of paper? There it is, Glastonbury, Glastonbury. Johnny Depp playing. Um, 
Uh, David Beckham's there, and he's not on stage. Thank God. Can you just imagine him singing? Oh, don't he look old now? Move over. Let's see someone young, for Christ's sake. Bring on Cristiano Ronaldo. Why can't he turn up at these places? Why can't we see Cristiano Ronaldo in a pair of pants? Why have we still got to keep looking at David Boy Beckham? So old. I mean, the bloke's got to be at least 15 years younger than me, maybe even less. Too old, dear. Go away. We want Cristiano Ronaldo in those pants adverts now. Yves Saint Laurent or whatever they are. Calvin, what's his name? Calvin Klein. I mean, you've you got to be off your head to spend 20 quid on a pair of pants, haven't you? Why do people do that? £20, £30, £40 on a pair of pants. Are you serious? You can get a packet of 10 from Marks and Spencers for about 10 quid. Pound each, dear. Pound it, wash them first. You don't know what sort of people have been making them, dear. My mate said that. He said you must always wash, for example, sheet. I just bought a new fitted sheet uh, from Amazon. Usually I'll get that. I mean, you can spend £100. Why is a sheet £100? Not mine. £35. It was 800 threadbare. Is it threadbare? Thread, thread count. 800 thread count, I think it was. And it's very nice. And my mate said you should always wash them first. Well, I found that out the other day. Because I bought from John Lewis, from John Lewis of all places, I was surprised at this. I bought this duvet set. Very nice. Green it is. Green. And um, it's like a green pattern type thing on it. Anyway, it's been in the drawer because it's like a summer one, you know, for summer. And I pulled, pulled it out a couple of weeks ago. I meant to tell you this. I opened the packet. Well, it stank. Oh, do you know what it smelled of? Sick. I thought someone's been sick in this bag. It absolutely stunk, this duvet set that I... From John Lewis, of all places, dear. Anyway, I took it out and I thought, maybe if I air it a while, the smell will go. Anyway, I opened it in the kitchen. And I, oh, it just stank in the kitchen. I thought, no, I'm going to wash this. So I put it in the uh, washing machine. Hang it out and the smell would gone. So I don't know what that is. It must have been the smell of the ink. I must say, it didn't, didn't like, fade at all in the washing machine. It really stunk. Awful. Um, apparently, uh, Dennis Dennis says, who's got his own range of pants? Oh, is that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh, CR7. Cristiano Ronaldo pants. Oh, let's have a look then. CR7. Under... Where? CR7 under... Oh, there he is. Right, OK. Uh, images. Let's have a look at him. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be having some of that. What oh, about that pouch at the front? Why don't he smile in any of his pictures? I can make him smile. Come on, smile, Cristiano. Oh, that's better, isn't it? He's but why is he? He's got. You can't see any of these, can he? He's got blue paint on himself as well. There. Oh dear, he needs that cleaned off. Sell him at TK Maxx. What really? <laughs> what the actual ones that he's been wearing? <laughs> Anyway, as I say, David Beckham was there uh, to see uh, various other people. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, Jeremy appears. And I thought, is he going to sing a song? Jeremy, oh, do you know, his name's gone right out of my head. Jeremy, Jer blimey, was, why has his name gone out of my head? Jeremy, not Jeremy Thorpe. Isn't that funny? The name's gone. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Not Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy... Jer Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you. Jeremy Corbyn. Suddenly, Jeremy Corbyn appears on the scene. And I thought, oh, don't say he's going to sing a bloody song now. Well, he didn't. He started preaching again. And they loved him. They loved him. They must have bust in all these Labour supporters in there. Just to start shouting and cheering while he was standing up there on his platform. Do you think that's fair? No! We love you, Jeremy. Do you think we should be doing this? No! We love you, Jeremy. What is going on? He's like some sort of pop star. How has he converted all these people? He's bought them, dear. Bought them. 
That's what's happened. He's bought them. Anyway, no song from Jeremy Corbyn. Very disappointed. I wonder what he would have sung. Something by Simply Red. Keep the red flag flying. Something like that. What do you think Jeremy Corbyn should have sung yesterday at Glastonbury? Let me know. Either on a message or you can call in if you want to. 020 is my local London number. OK, 020 3477 if you want to call in today. If you've got Skype, my Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. All one word. Phone line and Skype. Take your pick. 020 3477 or you can Skype in on United Kingdom Talk. What do you think Jeremy... Uh, Jeremy it's gone again. Jeremy Corbyn should sing at Glastonbury. Maybe, maybe they're saving him for the finale. How exciting. Maybe they're all going to be on there. Theresa May could come on and sing a, sing a song as that, well, couldn't she? The winner takes it all. The winner takes it all. <laughs> just. She just won, bless her heart. What could she sing? Would you like to see Theresa May on the stage at Glastonbury with Jeremy? Maybe they could do a duet. How about endless love? They could gaze into each other's eyes. My love, there's only you in my life. I like the sound of that. Jeremy Ray and Theresa. And we could have the liberal bloke as well. Mr. Farrow. Oh, no, he's left, hasn't he? If you can't stand the heat. He could sing. He could come on as the leaving member of the Liberal Party and sing If You Can't Stand the Heat. I like the sound of that. It makes me laugh at these um, party conferences they have. So they have the Labour one. And there they all are, packed hall, screaming and shouting, old Jeremy on the stage. Then they have the conservative one, packed hall, sitting there quietly, listening to the great Theresa May. Then they have the Liberal Democrat one, two people sitting at the front. <laughs> it's all very sad, really is. The Green Party lady, she's going to hold her next conference in the telephone box. No viewers. Very strange. <laughs> so Glastonbury. Quite like to see Theresa May there. Who else would you like to see there? There was rumours, I think it was last year actually, that Barry Manilow was going to do it, but it didn't happen. Very, very disappointing. Didn't happen. And why not? Shirley Bassey has done it. Shirley Bassey has done it. Do you remember that? A few years ago now. She's done it. Big stars. Tina Turner's done it, I think. Dolly Parton's done it. Why not Barry Manilow? That's who we need on Glastonbury. But would I go? Probably not. Probably not. Unless you can upgrade to a proper room, not some tent. I mean, did you see him on, the fr on that really hot Friday? <gasps> in the tent. At, oh, it must be awful there. It must be worse than being in a tent and being... At least, I suppose, you break the sun up a bit, didn't you, if you're in a tent. Can you just imagine how hot it would be there? Can you stay in a hotel? Is there, like, you know... Do they have boxes that are hotels? I don't know, like... Oh, temporary caravans, that's it. Even caravans would be better. With air conditioning, of course. I might go then. But not as it is now. And, of course... The toilets. Oh. Oh, God. And I've said before, it's not when they break down. It's not if they break down. It's when they break down. The toilets. How awful. Mark says, one of my favourite performances at West End Live yesterday was the Dream Girls. One night only. One night only. I love that song. I think you should do that tonight, Mark. One night only. Learn it, please. And Lacarja Falls uh, today. Excellent. Vera says, would they allow an artist... Hello, Vera, my darling. Would they allow an artist to turn up at one of their conferences? That's a good point, Vera. <coughs> now, who would you have at a Labour Party conference? What star would you have at a Labour Party conference? And what star would you have at a Conservative Party conference? I won't do the Liberals because that's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? Let's be honest. Why do they bother? <laughs> UKIP, well, they're finished now. They're gone. Green Party, oh, bless her. I mean, I do like some of the things she says. 
But I don't think we want a, a celebrity there. So who would you have? Make your selection, boys and girls. Who would you want to sing at the Labour Party conference? And who would you want to sing at the Conservative Party conference? And why? Why that one? Let us know. Send us a message or call in 0208 is my phone number, OK? But the toilets at Glastonbury, no. In fact, there's a little story here, boys and girls. In this morning's Super Soraway Daily Mail. It's one of the most eagerly anticipated events of the year, attracting over 100,000 revellers who come from miles around the set-up camps in the fields of Somerset. But concert goers could be putting Glastonbury's future at stake if they fail to make use of the site's toilet facilities. Oh, yes. Now festival bosses are hoping that their new poster campaign will finally put an end to the problem of people relieving themselves in the fields. Well, where else are you supposed to go? This year, revellers have been greeted by the dire warning, you go, we go, in a bid to encourage use of the site's 1,400 composting loos. I've got to tell you, I'm looking at a picture of these toilets. There's no bottom. Oh, sorry. When I, when I say there's no bottom, the doors, there's a gap of about a foot, 18 inches, perhaps, between the bottom of the door and the floor. You can see people's feet. I mean, that's just awful, isn't it? I, I couldn't be used. I hate that. When You know when you go to pubs sometimes as well? You often go to pubs and the door is only like that big. There's a gap like that at the top and, gap, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't go. Unless I'm absolutely desperate, I can't go. Sometimes I try the disabled toilet. If it's a disabled toilet, I'll try that one. I can't be going in a toilet if the door isn't the whole way down. It's just awful. The story goes on, peeing on the ground causes toxic pollution of the water table, warns the poster. The groundwater runs into the central White Lake River and down the valley for miles around. Wildlife and fish are affected. 200,000 revellers pee everywhere. Well, not just the pee, dear. Where's the rest of it go? Oh. There's a picture here of a festival worker protecting herself from the stench of the toilets. She's got a mask on. That's how bad the toilets are. Why would anyone want to go to this, eh? Do they have, like, proper toilets or better toilets that you can pay a bit more to go and use? I might go then. It adds that the Environment Agency tests the water regularly and even has the power to close down the site if too many people urinate and pollute the site. The festival has previously been fined thousands of pounds for violating environmental regulations. And further breaches could mean a ban on future events at the site. Awful. Last year, Glastonbury was ordered to pay £31,000 after thousands of gallons of human sewage leaked out of a steel container tank. I mean, what do they do with that anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see those toilets, they're horrendous. Come on, you couldn't really want to go to one of those. Oh. Vera says it's like that in China. You might as well leave the door open. Oh, it's. Have you been to China? Wow. I bet that's a good holiday, isn't it? China. Going somewhere like that. I hate the flying. I can't be standing the flying. I, I, I don't like flying anymore. I'm not scared of it. I just hate it. The mucking, mucking about and all that. Daniel says it must smell awful. Oh, it, I'm sure it does, Daniel. That's, you see that bloke there? That's Daniel. He's just become my Facebook friend. I must tell you, he sent me a message this morning. And uh, he said, do you remember I used to go to Colours? Now, Colours was... I've got an old photo here, funnily enough. And it's, it's right down. Funny how it's to hand like that. Uh, Colours was a place that I used to DJ at. Um... In the 1990s, around about 90, 
95, maybe a bit earlier than that even. Around about 1995, he used to DJ at this place called Colours in Romford, it was. It's gone now. It's not there anymore. And what it was, the, the little club was called Colours, as I say. And they decided to have a gay night. It wasn't a gay pub. And they brought me in. And it was well advertised, very well advertised. And from day one, it worked. And it worked extremely well. It was packed on the first night we opened. And it remained like that every single night until we closed. But what happened, for some reason, this club was busy at the weekends as a straight club. These days, there's much more of a mix. This probably wouldn't happen now, to be honest. You see gay people kissing and cuddling in straight clubs. You see straight people kissing and cuddling. It's all mixing together, which which I knew it always would. When I started DJing on the gay scene years ago, I always knew it would all mix into one at some point as time went on. And this is happening now. Um, but not around then, it was a little bit more separate. That was a gay club. That was a straight club. It was a bit like that. <clears throat> anyway. So this place, Colours, decided to do this gay night on Wednesdays, it was. Nine till... I think it was nine till one. I'm pretty sure it was nine till one. I don't think it was two o'clock. It was not, I'm sure it was nine till one. And... Um, as I say, it worked very well. But it started affecting the straight nights. The straight... I suppose the straight lads didn't like it. And they, they, start, they started getting quieter at the weekends, whereas the Wednesday was still packed. It never, ever went quiet in all that time. I think it went for about a year. And sort of fairly quickly, I think the weekends emptied out. They went somewhere else. And I think it was the success of the gay night that killed the place because it couldn't run on one night. And eventually they closed. It was just over the road from McDonald's. I think it's a shoe shop now. But it was a great place to work. Uh, the music of the time, I used to play a lot of steps in there. Um, and it was, they had boxes where people would dance on the stage and all that. Actually, Daniel was always asking for steps. It was a great place, Colours, in Romford. And from there, uh, when that closed, it moved to Basildon. I moved with it, but for some reason at Basildon, it just didn't work for me. It, it, it didn't work at all. just didn't work. And we kept going for a few weeks, and then eventually um, I went. Now, did, did, they, did they ask me to go, or did I leave? I can't remember that one. Usually, if I don't think something's working well, and after I've given it a good time, I'll just go anyway. Uh... I can't remember. It doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter. But it never worked for me once we moved to Basildon. Really didn't. Um, and then there was a big gap. And then after many, many years, about two years ago, they asked me to go back and DJ there. And I did, Basildon. And it was working better, but I didn't like it. I hated it, actually. I absolutely hated it. Don't know why. Can't explain why. I just detested it. Mind you, I was going off the DJing at this point anyway. I was getting fed up DJing. And I think I did about six months there. It was like once a month. I think it was once a month on the Friday. I'm sure it was once a month on the Friday was doing there. I did about six of them and then I, then I, then I quit because I hated it. Absolutely hated it. So that's the colour story. Here's the old poster. Look. Look how old this is. Can you spot me here? These are some of our customers there. And you do wonder what happened to these people. There's me there. Look. Oh, no, there. Can you see me there? <laughs> hey, look, how old is that? Gosh, look thin, dear, thin, thin, thin. Well, that's the colours post up. Look opposite McDonald's at the uh, at the Liberty. It's gone now. Funny how that, isn't it? That was right under the shelf there. I knew it was in here somewhere. I used to have all these posters and things up on the wall when I used to do um when I was like big time club DJ. It was all all, all over the South East. I used to do this place in Leeds as well. That was a drive and a half. Oh dear. It would like be like three and a half, four hours to drive there and another three and a half, four hours to drive back and like three, two and a half hours to do the actual job itself. That was at, um, 
Yale Bar in Leeds. I did a couple of jobs in Leeds. One was Yale Bar, and uh, which was 1990-ish, 1991 maybe, somewhere around there. And then I did a place called Religion, which was, um, I think, around 2000. I didn't last very long, Religion one. So, yeah, I've been all over the place doing my DJing and all that. But uh, as as you well know, I, I, I started becoming very bored with it a, a number of years ago. And uh, I, I don't really DJ now at all. Uh, the only kind of DJing I do now is on a Saturday night, which is um, at Central Station. But I'm more of a host there than a DJ. You know, I talk, welcome people, play requests, put the cabaret on, a couple of more songs, and then I go home. It's not really DJing. So I mainly gave up the club DJing just because I got so bored with it. I mean, if I was to ever do it again, I think I'd like to do house. I have done house DJing. That was quite good. I did it a few years ago at a place in Clapham um, when someone was ill, when I was kind of hoping to get the job, when... <laughs> but he got, but he got better again, so that was it. And I was only temporarily doing it, and I was it was banging, bang, 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 bang like that all night long. I could do that again. I don't think I can do pop DJing anymore. People often ask, nice people, you know, do you want to come and do my wedding? Do you want to come and do my birthday? Something like that. But no, I just, it just, I get so bored. And one of the reasons I get bored is because it's on a laptop now and not records. There's nothing to flick through and touch. I mean, even when you was on CDs, when we went from records to CDs, you know, you still touch things and pick things out. And records, it's so easy on a computer, I can't tell you. And of course, the crowd has changed. <coughs> no longer do they want the remix of a song. They want the original three minute version they've seen on the telly. It's impossible sometimes to play any new music. And I just I just lost all interest on DJ a number of years ago. Honestly, quite a few years ago, I would say... 10 years ago, I, I got bored with DJing. 10 years, as long as that. The last time I really enjoyed DJing was at Belushi's in Hammersmith. When I was doing a, a, a night there. Just a normal straight pub, that was. And I used to do Saturday nights there. Uh, the manager there was a guy called, uh, a chap called Robbie, who I've got him, I, I've known for years and years and worked with him in various different places, including there. Uh, the Black Cap and the Long Island Tea Shop in um, Leicester Square. And I used to do Saturday nights in there. That that was fantastic as well. Really enjoyed working there. Yeah. But um, more recently, no, I'm just so bored with it. There's nothing to think about, you know, dragging and dropping and people moaning and moaning and moaning and rude people all the time. And I'm, I got sick of it, absolutely sick of it. So I gave up. And I moved, I, I wanted to move everything over to karaoke and quiz nights. And that's what I do now. Just karaoke and quiz. And I love the jobs. All the jobs I'm doing at the moment, I absolutely love. You get involved with people. You talk to people. I've got two nights off a week, a Tuesday and a Thursday at the moment, which is OK. You know, that's all right. But if something was to come along, like another karaoke night or a quiz night on one of those two nights, then I would probably take it. But not DJ. I wouldn't take another DJing job now. No, finished with it finished i do you know i don't even know what's in the charts now i finished the last dj proper djing job i had i finished about three i think it was about three or four weeks ago and uh, i haven't looked at the charts since i've no interest in that no interest at all funny isn't it really how uh, that happens like that i guess you do get fed up after a while don't you um thank you daniel he says um basildon wasn't as good as romford no it certainly wasn't daniel I mean, it really, really wasn't. People just didn't dance or didn't want to know. And the Romford crowd didn't come to Basildon. I think maybe on one hand I could count the amount of people that came from the Romford to the Basildon one. It just did not transfer well at all. Funny that, isn't it? Uh, Vera says, I guess it must be difficult when you're in full swing of your set and someone wants cheesy music. Yeah, I think you're right as well. <laughs> Cheesy music, yeah. But um, house DJ, and I would do that again. And you can, you know, but I wouldn't take requests. I don't think I'd take requests. When I was doing the house DJ and in Clapham, I would spend a good hour, maybe two hours on the Friday, finding new music. You know, there's various DJ websites that you can download music, uh, not expensive, like about one pound fifty per track, because you just buy the one track. You see, not not like a record with four tracks on it. 
Um, the one I used to use, I might have it here. Let me have a look. See if I've got it here. Recent. No, I haven't. I've, oh, there we are. Dance. DJ Tunes Top 100. I think that was what it was called. DJTunes.com. That's it. DJTunes.com. And that's where you can buy uh, so much music there. £1.69, £1.29 a track. And I'd be on there and I'd spend 20 of... It doesn't sound like a lot of money now compared to what we used to pay. I would pay 20 or 30 pounds. I would pay 20 or 30 pounds a week when I was doing the Saturday nights. Mind you, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I was going to a record shop and buying 80, 90, 100 pounds a week on, on records. It's so much cheaper now. And of course, there are sites you can download it completely free of charge. But as a, as a proper DJ, you don't, you can't do that. Not well, you shouldn't do that really, because at any time people could walk into a venue from the um, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, and it's happened to me a couple of times. They come in from uh, it, it's a government department. I can't remember what they call that, but they come in and, and, and someone sits there with you and writes down all the music that you're playing, and then off they go to check out that you've bought it. And that you haven't nicked it from somewhere. That that does happen, I promise you. That does happen. So you can't really, you know, be doing this illegal downloading of music. PRS, thank you, Craig. PRS. PRS. That does act it's happened to me once, twice, three times, four to four times it's happened. Four times that happened. They can walk in at any time. Hello, I'm from so-and-so. I'll just sit over there and uh, be writing down what you're playing. Okay. Then they come over and have a look, see what you're doing and all that. You get in terrible trouble if you've been nicking music. People don't realise that. Um, <clears throat> good. So that's Glastonbury and DJing. No one's calling in today, so I shall now close the phone lines. It's always open for a little while if you want to call in. But you've missed your opportunity now, boys and girls. <laughs> All right. Okay, though, let's do today's birthdays and then we're uh, going to disappear today because it's a Sunday and I've got um, stuff to get ready for the karaoke later tonight. Don't forget karaoke tonight. Camden I, Camden Town. Join us there. Eight till 11 o'clock tonight. Looking forward to that one. Happy birthday today to Peter Murray. Now, it says, Peter, you are 101 years old. I don't believe that looking at that picture. I think you're much older. Happy birthday, Peter. Happy birthday to Sam Desmond. Very, very popular DJ. 30 today. Are you feeling old, Sam? Sam, let me tell you. My favourite age period was 32 to 47. That was my favourite age period. I was wild at that age. Wild. So you've still got another couple of years to wait, all right? He's a, a, a top club DJ. He works all over London now. And he started off as a sound boy in heaven. I was DJing at heaven and he was one of my sound boys. He used to fix all the wires and all that. Now he's a DJ in his own right and doing very well. Congratulations. Very proud of you, Sam, what you've achieved. Happy birthday, Sam. OK. Happy birthday to Trevor. 51 today. Happy birthday, Trevor. Now, why haven't you been down to my karaoke lately? Very, very disappointed. Come along, Trevor. Don't be shy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Suzanne Brown, 35 years old today. Looking good, Suzanne. Happy birthday, Suzanne. Sharon Olav, another big time uh, club DJ there. It's her birthday as well. I always remember you, Sharon. Happy birthday, Sharon. Uh, and happy birthday to Trevor Dunbar. Hello, Trevor. Spreading his love all over the world, aren't you, Trevor? So let's sing to you. Where's my birthday song? Here we go. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Peter, Sam, Trevor, Kieran, Suzanne and Sharon and Trevor, happy birthday to you. Oh, oh my god, I've, I've skipped across possibly the most important one here, my dear, dear friend Kieran. Kieran O'Brien, happy birthday to you today. Does it say your age? Sorry, I must have skipped across that one somehow. Kieran, let me have a look. No, it doesn't say your age. You're about 29, I reckon. Is that a good guess? Kieran, he used to be one of my managers at um, 
at Central Station, actually. He left there some time ago now. And he lives a bit out now. He, he wants to move back to London, I think. But um, happy birthday to you, Kieran. It's always, always a pleasure to see your smiling, happy face there in uh, Central Station, all right? Okie doke, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining in, boys and girls. Uh, you can email the show at any time, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Just to let you know, my show tomorrow <clears throat> on Upload Radio, because I do a, a, a thing on the radio here as well now, boys and girls. Upload Radio, which you can also hear online. That's on tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, OK? So that's my show on Upload Radio. Just look it up there. That's at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Although I'll probably be doing a live uh, uh, video show as well round about the same time here on Facebook Live. So take your pick. I'm all, all over the place, all over the place. So hopefully see some of you tonight at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 11 o'clock. Every Sunday night between 8 and 11, karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. See you soon. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Enjoy your Sunday. Cheerio now.